Hello guys and welcome to a new YouTube video. My name is Lina and I'm an artist and small business owner from Northern Germany. Today is gonna be a really special video because we gathered here because I reached my first thousand subscribers. Woo. I'm super thankful to everyone who joined me over here. I already have a little bit of a following over on Instagram and TikTok but it's really hard to translate followers from one platform to another. So seeing that we already have a thousand subscribers over here is super exciting to me. I also want to be even more active in the future and post more long form content. For my thousand subscriber special, I decided to do one of those small Q&A videos. Since I am a small business, I get asked a lot of the same questions again and again. So I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to answer some of those questions. And without further ado, let's jump right into the questions. How did you start with your shop? So I run the Bam Bam shop and I think I started around summer of 2019. And I never really had a grand plan of being a business owner or anything like that. The whole uh, small business hype kind of first started during the pandemic. So being a small business owner before that wasn't that well documented on social media. Obviously there were quite a few small businesses already, but not to the extent that you see nowadays. So I never really thought I could do this full time. I just started it because it looked like fun. I saw other people making really cute products and I wanted to do the same thing. And that leads us right into question number two. Why did you choose a bunny? So I always loved bunnies from a very, very young age. You know how every child has their favorite little plushie. Mine was actually a small green bunny, which my mom then lost when I was 12 in a hotel and we never found it again and it got thrown in the trash. And I'm still mad about it. But nonetheless, I always loved bunnies until my teen years and then I was kind of occupied with finding myself and figuring out who I am as a person. So I never really thought about them again until my mid-twenties. In my mid-twenties I met my ex-boyfriend who liked bunnies and called me Bam Bam and I called him Bun. And that grew into this obsession we all of a sudden both had with bunnies. We sent each other gifts and memes all with bunnies and I just rediscovered how much I love bunnies. At that point I actually drew a lot of anime and manga artwork but I slowly tried to also incorporate bunnies and draw bunnies more often and that's kind of how we got started. What's the product you started your business with? So while I would always recommend starting out with a smaller product like stickers or prints because they are very inexpensive in production, I actually started out with enamel pins. So yes, I went for a really expensive product right from the get-go. My first ever enamel pin was my little burger bun who was part of my Buns in Food Heaven series. Before the whole collection even existed, it was just burger bun. I got him made into an enamel pin. I did, however, not like the manufacturer though, switched to a different manufacturer and then made a whole collection as well. How did you make ends meet when you first opened the shop? So when I started my business, I was already a freelance artist. I mainly did commissioned artwork and I also did live streaming on Twitch on the side. I had done this for a couple of years already. First, I was full-time Twitch streaming. I had done this for a couple of years already. First, it was full-time Twitch streaming. Then it slowly translated into full-time commissioned work. And then we went into the business aspect of the Bun Bun Shop. So when I didn't have a real job, I still made my money through commissioned work, through normal followers on Twitter or Instagram, or by working together with video game companies. I also made sure that when I started my business that I never 
spend money on it. So my first Kickstarter campaign was actually funded through Kickstarter, which basically means that the people who were interested in the product paid for it and I could then pay for production. I never spent more than a couple of hundred bucks on the business for the first year or two. Okay, the next one is a long one. When you first started out with your business, what did you imagine how it would turn out versus how it actually turned out until now? And what are your dreams for the future of Bun Bun, realistic or not? So, as I mentioned, I don't really had that many expectations when making my business. I just wanted to do it because it seemed fun. But one of my early on inspirations was definitely Pusheen, which is this early 2000s gray cat that started on Tumblr, I think, or over on Instagram, and it was just small comics of somebody drawing their cat. Pushin later on became a real business. I think they are selling plushies, mugs, towels, basically everything these days. And because I was a really big fan of Pushin back then, I decided that I wanted to become like Pushin, but just with bunnies. Did it actually turn out the way I thought it would? It kinda did. I mean, I am doing exactly what I always wanted to. Bun Bun is basically like Pushy now. It is its own little thing. People who follow me, they know who Bun Bun is. And I'm very happy that I could start to make my own products. So my dreams for the future are basically that I want Bun Bun to become the European or German version of Hello Kitty. Some of you might know Miffy, who originally in the Netherlands or Didel, which I actually think is German. It's like this little mouse character that was really big in the late 90s and the early 2000s. And that's kind of who I want to become with Bun Bun. I want people outside of the internet to actually know who Bun Bun is. I want children and young teens to have small notebooks from Bun Bun or maybe a pencil case. They don't necessarily need to know the whole history behind Bun Bun, but it needs to be so recognizable that if you see someone on the street and you see they are wearing Bun Bun, everyone knows it's Bun Bun. How do you manage to balance being a mom and a full-time artist? So I actually have a 12-year-old son and I love him very much, but because he's already a little bit older, managing being a mom and managing the business is actually not that hard. I'm also very lucky in the sense that I have very supportive family, like my mom, who helps me with a lot of things, both privately, but also in the business aspect, and who wants me to succeed. Because of that, she is always there to take care of my son if I have an important meeting or if there is important work that needs to be done for the shop. I know not everyone has this privilege of a super supportive family and I know especially if you have younger kids, this would be much harder to do, like both things at the same time. So I don't have that many good tips to give here besides try your best and work through it. But I also understand that that might sound much easier said than done. Because at the end of the day, both of these things are full-time jobs. Being a mom is a lot of work and running your own business is as well. For everyone who's trying to do both things at the same time, I have a lot of respect for you because I know it's really, really hard. Okay, next question. Spicy. How much do you make a month? Just wondering for motivation to keep going with my art business. So before I actually give a number, I want to preface by saying that I think it's good to get motivated by other people or inspired to be like other creators. I do, however, not want to give off the impression that what I make in a month is the standard. I do think a lot of factors come into play here. I was very lucky and then on top I worked extremely hard to maintain my success. In a month I make between 10 to 50,000 euros. And this is a really big difference in numbers. So 
The main reason for that is sometimes I have pre-orders open that people have been waiting for for a long time, which increases the sales in a month. Or I also have a convention on top of that, which also again increases the sales. But in a normal month, I would say I make around 10 to 20K. I know this seems like a lot of money, but I've also been in business for five years with multiple employees at this point and a very high overhead cost for production. So I hope most people understand that this is obviously not the money I take home. If you're interested in a more in-depth video about how much money I made throughout a year and how many expenses I actually have, uh, let me know in the comments and maybe I can make a video about it in the near future. Next question is tips on how to grow your following and get more views or likes. And I want to say for this one, when I started out, I feel like it was a lot easier. I think the social media landscape and the algorithms have changed quite a bit and it's definitely become a lot harder compared to when I started out. I do, however, want to say that I think the biggest tip from me is to be consistent. You probably have heard this before. I think it's a very standard answer, but I also think it holds very, very true. If you want to grow a following or even a customer base for your shop, you need to make sure that your customers and followers know what they are getting into. It's not helpful then if you draw realism one day and draw cute anime art style the next day. In the end of the day, this will just confuse your follower base and make them question what content they followed you for in the first place. Especially for people who are creative, this can become really mundane and boring because I feel like creative people like to explore a lot of different ideas and try new things. And I think you can definitely do that, but you should stick to a certain niche. And for me, that would be drawing kawaii artworks and combining them with my character Bam Bam. And while this might seem restrictive in the first place, it actually is not because I can still draw whatever I want. I just need to make sure to include those two things. Next question is, would you do commissions? And the short answer is no. <laughs> the long answer is, as I mentioned earlier, I already did commission work before I started my business. It's a really tough way of making a living and you definitely run into a lot of problems when you think about how much time you spend on commissions and how much money you get in return. I still work with companies from time to time because I think they can compensate me better for the time I spend working, but I have no plans to open up commissions to just normal people or followers anytime soon. And I know this might sound very calculated, but the sole reason for that is a normal person will probably not pay me the rates that I would charge for doing a commission in the first place. How to get sponsorships even as a smaller creator? I personally think this is one of the easier ones to answer because it's rather simple. You need to put in the work, you need to put yourself out there and you will find a company that's willing to work with you. The reason why a lot of small creators don't get sponsorships is because they are waiting for a company to reach out to them. To be honest, that just barely ever happens because how would the company even know you in the first place when you are a small creator? They must stumble upon you by absolute accidents and let's be honest, that just doesn't happen as often. If you see a small creator having a sponsorship or a collab, the more likely thing that happened is that they actually reached out to the company themselves. Himself. That does however mean that you might have to write a hundred emails before you get one company that bites. I understand that it is a lot of work because I've done it myself but if you actually want that sponsorship you need to learn how to sell yourself and you need to reach out to companies again and again and again. And you will get a shit ton of no's but that doesn't matter as soon as you get that one yes. Do you also have another job or is your business your main and or only thing? The Bandan shop is my only job 
currently and I'm very happy that it's my only job because it's a lot of work already and definitely more work than one person should handle. I would not have the time to do another full-time job or part-time job on top of that. The only real job I ever had was actually working at a call center in 2014 or 15 and I worked there for around a year. The company basically sold internet and mobile phone plans and stuff like that and it was just not the right fit. I got yelled at every day for a year and I decided that that's not for me and afterwards I started to become a freelance artist. So yeah, Banban Ban is my only thing. I'm really happy about it and I hope it stays this way for another couple of years. An advice to myself from 10 to 15 years ago. So I actually have two advices for myself. The first one would be to be a little more kind to myself and not trying to fit in so much. I've always been very much of a people pleaser and if I had a friend group I always try to be the chameleon who copies what everyone else liked so they would like me. So in the end of the day I feel like I never really built my own identity and it took me very long to get to a point where I'm comfortable with just being myself and I wish I would have learned this a lot sooner because I think it would have made me less sad. <laughs> Second advice for myself would be don't go into debt over small things. So I think there is good debt, which is buying a house, investing in a business, um, maybe buying a car, but getting into debt for small things like a vacation or clothes or buying a new phone, I think is super stupid. I did this a lot in my early 20s and it took me a super long time to get out of it so if I could give myself an advice I would probably beat myself up to not get any debt <laughs> because that was really stupid don't do that guys if someone asks you what you're doing job wise do you sometimes lie or always say you own a shop I actually really love this question because it's kind of funny uh, I actually lie to people a lot it highly depends on who I'm actually talking to if it's somebody I'm interested in on a personal level or want to become friends with. I'm obviously way more open-minded, but if it's somebody I just meet in passing or someone I'm never really gonna get close to, I don't mind lying to them and saying I work in retail. That's normally my go-to excuse. I just say, oh, I work retail. Because often it's also just really hard to explain what I do. Especially with the older generation. I think everyone the age 50 plus have a really hard time understanding that you can make money on the internet. And often also say it's not a real job or they say you can't really make that much money off of it. So I don't want to get into a situation where I have to explain myself a lot or get frustrated. So I just avoid it by lying. So if you ever want an excuse, just say you work in retail. <laughs> How long did it take to build the audience that you have now? So as I mentioned, I already started the shop in 2019, but I wasn't really serious about it for the first couple of years. So I would say I fully got into wanting Banban Ban to be its own thing in 2022. That was around March to June because that's when my Ban Ban shoulder bags launched for the first time. I had one or two viral moments. I would call them viral with over a million views. I got a ton of orders and I was really excited about it. And I saw for the first time that I could actually make money off of this, like really good money and actually Oh, you can live off of this money so I decided to take it very serious afterwards so even though I have had my accounts since 2019 I think most of my following came from 2022 and onwards so most of you don't even know me that long yet how do you keep track of your finances which program or tool do you so my tool is called an accountant. <laughs> For income stream, I actually look into Shopify, PayPal and SumUp. Those are the main three sources of where I generate my, my revenue. For expenses, I just have an Excel sheet and then on top of that, I make like a small folder on my PC every month and I just put all the receipts in there. And then I send it all off to my accountant. <laughs> 
This might not be the most interesting or exciting answer, but that's basically how it goes. I just make sure that I pay my taxes properly and that I make a profit every month. How do you handle hate if you get any? So I would consider myself pretty unproblematic. It's a cute bunny on the internet. I don't think there's that much to hate. Like not everyone needs to like it, but there's also not much to dislike. I don't think I've ever been in any controversies, which I'm happy about. And the few comments I get here and there of people complaining is mostly from people who take a joke too serious, like when I make a reel and then the joke flies over their head. That's when I sometimes get a rude comment or two, but overall I would say I've been very lucky that I don't have trouble with anyone actually hating. My biggest tip for this though is still to just turn your phone off from time to time if you actually see an opinion you don't agree with or somebody is rude to you. I think you should first of all step away for a minute to actually cool down because I think the most discussions I have had with people on the internet actually stem from me being very reactionary. If somebody wrote something, I instantly answered and wanted to prove them wrong. And I think that's often where a lot of discussions go wrong. Think about what you want to answer or just block them from the get-go because they are not worth your time. What equipment and programs do you use when making art? So I work with a Wacom Cintiq 27Q HD. It's a tablet I use to draw all my artwork on. To be fair, it's rather big and it's not very big beginner friendly or budget friendly. I basically got it gifted through a Twitch donation a couple of years ago and I loved working with it but I would definitely not recommend it for beginners. I also work with an iPad Pro second generation which is I think six or seven years old already. The battery is kind of bad so I don't draw on it a lot because it drains the battery. I mostly use it for watching YouTube or sketching sometimes. The software I use to draw is always Clip Studio Paint or I use Photoshop and Illustrator for editing or for doing vector files which are often used for my manufacturer. If I do video content for social media I use CapCut for editing and I film everything on my iPhone or I also use Premiere Pro or a Canon G 7x for filming. I need to admit though I should probably update both my iPad at some point soon so I can work on the go and I would also like to update the camera that I'm using because it's pretty old and it's not that good quality anymore. And the last question is any new business ideas for the future? And the answer is a resounding yes! I always have ideas. I have a lot of ideas. If I could, I would just take them all out of my brain and then project them into reality. But that's sadly not how it works. Often um, making something new takes a lot of time and sadly also a lot of money. I don't have anything I want to announce yet um, since I feel like I always walk into a little bit of a trap when I announce something before it actually is ready. I did that with my backpacks and wallets and my bum button fashion and all three bit me in the ass. I do however have some really cool things planned for for this year, especially for Halloween if you are a big fan of Bunsen, this little guy down here. You should definitely wait until Halloween time, October. These were all the questions I had right now. If you watched until here, thank you so much. I hope you were able to take something away from this video. If you have any follow-up questions or any requests for me to do maybe other videos in the future, please let me know in the comments. I hope as I mentioned before, that I can do more long-form content for you guys very soon. Also, thank you for being around for the first thousand subscribers. I'm still so happy about it. And I hope I see you for next week's studio vlog. Bye-bye.